Okay. okay. It is 6.32. We'll now reconvene the open session. Uh, reporting out from closed session, we did not reach any decisions and we will be continuing the closed session after the public session is open or is over. Can you repeat that please? I couldn't hear you. I said that reporting out from closed session, we did not reach any decisions um, and we will continue the closed session after the public session is finished. Thank you. All right, shall we oh, take roll? Yes, please take roll. President Hill? Here. Director Small? Here. Director Lang? Here. Director Foltz? Uh, here remotely, no one under 18 is in the room and I will probably be off video most of the meeting in order to conserve uh -huh. bandwidth. My apologies to everybody, but I'm sure you'll like the fact that you don't have to see my face. <laughs> Thank you. And then okay. Director um, Largay is absent. Yes, Director Largay is absent and excused. Awesome. Thank okay, you. changes to the agenda. Additions to the agenda, if any, may only be made in accordance with the California Government Code Section 54954.2, Ralph M. Brown Act, which includes but is not limited to additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted as determined by a two-thirds vote of the board of directors or if less than two-thirds of the members are present a unanimous one of those members uh, is required oral communications uh, excuse me um uh, jeff i have a i have a motion i'd like to make with respect to the agenda okay please do I would like to move that we add to the agenda the study session that this board has requested multiple times uh, to be put on the agenda and it is still not here. And I would like that to be done in accordance with whatever declaration we need to make that uh, Barbara will help me help inform me of that. You would need to make a determination that this matter needs to be heard under emergency um, situation. So if there's some sort of emergency reason for adding this to the agenda, you would have to, um, you would have to have a majority make that determination. Yeah, and, and the determination would be the uh, potential, the uh, imminent expiration of the FEMA grant money that Brackenbrae um, is facing. Yes, and I had a discussion with that about that yesterday, and where we've made taken steps to uh, resolve that immediate issue and, and allow the FEMA scope of work to be prepared by Sandus to mm -hmm. avoid that the loss of that grant. And Sandus will be able to deliver all this information in time. I, I don't have that information and, and this item's not on the agenda. So. Well, I understand that, but if I can make a motion and get a second, we can have some discussion about it so that we can figure out exactly how they're not going to lose their money. I'd like to hear that from Bracken Bray. Because right now, the information I have is they're going to lose their money. I understand, and like I indicated, I, I had a phone call with them to avoid that yesterday. Well, so I, um, I think your motion, I think you need a second on your motion. Raise the motion. Did, yeah, did we hear a... Yeah, if, if, if I could, if I could amend that uh, or make a friendly amendment to that, Bob, Uh, I'm certainly willing to compromise as long as we get this going. I um, agree. I, I'd like to hear uh, further about what Barbara has said and give Brackenbray the chance to comment on that also. I don't think um, anybody, or I'm not prepared here to go through a work study session this evening. I think that's what I heard you say earlier. Yep. If we're, if we're focusing this on that, uh, on that grant and what progress has been made. Yes, I would second that. Uh, well, I think 
I think, uh, Mark, that we probably could hear from Brackenberry during the um, the uh, public communication coming up here shortly. Um, that would certainly be okay, but I, you know, I, I don't want to lose the ability to add something to the agenda if three minutes isn't enough. Uh, the other alternative would be for the board to basically say no longer direct staff to uh, put this on the agenda, but we put it on an agenda at a special meeting coming up in advance of that deadline. I'd be uh, that I'd, I I can work on a compromise for that, but I I don't want to let the ability to add something to the agenda right. go past here without it. hearing from somebody like okay. Brackenberg. Uh, um, uh, Barbara, can I hear from Nicole right now? Am I allowed to do that as a board no, member? That no, the item's not on the agenda. She can certainly make a in, comment. In the, in the public. On, can, I, can I finish, please? Sure. She can make a comment in the public session okay. during the public comment period on items that are not on the agenda. And there's nothing on the agenda for the consolidation. Um, may, I, may I make a, um, uh, Barbara, I would like then to move the oral communication to now move the changes to the agenda to after oral communications. Can we do that? Certainly you can change the order of your agenda items. Mm -hmm. Jeff, could you could you do that then please? I that's fine with me. I don't care if we change the order of the agenda items. I don't I'm believe we need a motion for that, do we? But yeah, do, go ahead and make a motion to change the take the public comment now, as mm -hmm. item, I don't know what item number you're on, right? Yeah, I will, uh, I'll figure that out. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we modify the order of the agenda to place item number eight, oral communications, ahead of items number seven, uh, changes to the agenda. I'll second that. Okay. If secretary, please call. If we need to take a vote on this. Uh, any discussion? Further discussion? No. Okay. Secretary, call the roll. President Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Foltz? Yes. All right. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. So we are now at oral communications. Thank you. Marriage. I hope that I'm not um, I'm not restricted by the three minutes. Um, I'm going to respond to the, the comment that was made um, by Bob. Um, clearly, in our letter of intent, it states our deadline. In fact, it does not state the Department of Water Resources deadline, and we talked about this previously. Um, it says Brackenbrae FEMA funding. The district understands that Brackenbrae applied for and has been awarded grant funding provided by the Federal Emergency Management Agency for repairs necessitated by the CZE wildfire. Brackenbrae understands and represents to the district that Brackenbrae's deadline, with all potential time extension to complete construction using FEMA funding, is 48 months from the date of the declared the date of the declaration of the federal disaster, August 22nd, 2020, the calc the, and calculates the deadline as August 22nd, 2024, which is a week from today. The district will use best efforts to reasonably assist Brackenbrae with its efforts to complete engineering studies, environmental reviews needed for the water system construction that utilizes the FEMA funding. The parties understand and acknowledge that the consolidation agreement, yet to be decided on, will allocate any responsibility between the parties regarding the water system construction using FEMA funding. For example, if Brackenbrae would like the district to administer the procurement of the water construction using Brackenbrae's FEMA funding, the applicable terms and conditions will be negotiated and set forth in the consolidation agreement. <clears throat> so that's to answer his question. So I've used a minute to respond to a comment that was asked of me when I could not respond. Um, I did. I did meet with legal counsel yesterday. Um, we did so because um, the current interim general manager refuses to meet with me. 
In this same consolidation agreement, it states bracket break term two after the first term, which is the lead agency, which is SLD Water District. Mm -hmm. The second term is Bracken Bray's representative, Bracken Bray designates its water commissioner to serve as the primary point of contact and liaison with the district. Mm -hmm. The reason why it came in April, in May, June, July, and August to the board, you are responsible to manage the general manager. Mm -hmm. If the general manager refuses to work with us on a contract that the district and legal counsel approved along with our community, there are seven signatures on here. You were in a sense of breach of contract. I would go further to say that when I've asked for information, it has taken up to six weeks to eight weeks. That is because um, staff has been told not to work with me. Staff has been told not to work with Brackenbrae for basic information and reports that were completed in 2022. The engineer is uncomfortable providing that information, and I can't go to the, the engineering management for that information. So what have I done? I have come here during regular meetings and special meetings to have this discussion. I beg you to have this discussion. We will be turning over the system for free to become customers. We are trying really hard. The other thing that's happening I have a deadline to turn in a matching grant application. It requires our scope of work to be approved. As I stated, for anyone who understands FEMA grant money, it is obligated based on putting you back as you were. We have to do a version to the scope of work. Our plans have been completed since May of 2023. We can have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments on this? Hi, Deborah Lowe in Lampico Canyon, and uh, thank you, Nicole. This board really needs to be kicked in the butt and get going on this. Um, as a former area that got consolidated with SLD, you can't afford to keep waiting and waiting. The prices go up. We we had a firsthand experience on that. So the sooner the board acts, the better. But what I wanted to talk about is something that is not on the agenda tonight. Um, and I'm not sure I'll be able to be here for the agenda item that discusses um, another contract with RAP. Tell us to tell you how much money will be at risk with the changing of the service charge. And I understand that's some information you're interested in. And you can Council, a uh, point of order that is on the agenda. Thank you. Great. I did not like to be interrupted. I said I was going to talk about something that is not on the agenda. What is not on the agenda is the counter to that item, and that is this board voted to reduce water consumption rates, and you did that in February. And to counter, when you're going to go to the public, informational wise, you cannot be opposed to the measure. You have to give. You have to give information that is neutral and represents all of the different sides of it. Representing the other side would be how much money did you choose to give up when you reduce water rates? I have estimated that amount. I would like to see what you come up with because my estimate is very close to what your staff estimate was for the changes in the basic service charge. We are having a balance. When the service charge goes up, the rates have gone down. When the service charge goes down, the rates will come up. There's virtually this within the same ballpark area. And that would be very interesting for the public to know what you gave up, what you deliberately took less money by reducing the water rates in order to raise the basic service charge. Thank you. Karen Brown, North of Boulder Creek. I've been going through the CIP plans and I put them in a logical order and I put them in the dates of all the packets. And I'm noticing here in, in uh, May 2nd that Santos has already approved for the build and that the board uh, gave a resolution on the April packet 
for him to, con to continue with the Bracken Ray. Resolution number 13, 2324. And I see the GM not complying with the board. I see the GM stalling. I see the GM twisting and turning the words as he writes all his reports month by month. That's why I thought I'd put it in a nice logical order, alphabetical, meeting by meeting by meeting. And the next step for me to do is to balance your checkbook against the amounts he claims he has to pay. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public or from the board? There are online um, comments. Yes, I know. I'm looking here. I don't. I don't seem to have them here. Just a moment. There's eight people with their hands up. Okay. Um, I don't see them, so I believe they are there. Uh, Mark, can you see them? Um, yes, I'll start calling. Could you call on the Mark, please? <laughs> uh, Cynthia Denzel. Uh, yes, this is Cynthia Zenzel. I'd like to read a statement. We all want safe and affordable water. We depend on an elected board and the employees of SLV Water District to achieve this outcome. The most effective and efficient team is one in which each member supports and feels supported by the others. Board members volunteer much of their time and leave when their health or family take priority. Staff okay. leave when they are offered better opportunities for advancement, retire, or are incapacitated. Rather than denigrate their service, our community should find ways to reward their loyalty and show appreciation. The public plays a critical role for a public agency. The board and staff answer to ratepayers. We convey by our comments that we either support or condemn the creation of a hostile work environment and demeaning statements at board meetings and in the media. There has been too much criticism and too little support for those trying to perform in the face, face of daunting challenges. Major challenges are still the need to make repairs due to the CZU fires, upgrade aging tanks and pipelines acquired through consolidations, harden facilities vulnerable to wildfire and arson, and increase the availability of water for future emergencies. Ratepayers must commit to making positive suggestions to the board and staff at public meetings and refuse to support anyone making hostile and demeaning comments. Please support those with a positive vision for the future of SLV Water District and ensure that we all have clean and abundant water. We can find a way to ease the burden on our struggling neighbors without starving the district of needed revenues. Let's work together and keep the water flowing for all. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Uh, next is Eva Smolenseva. Hi, my name is Eva Smolenseva. I serve as the president for the Forest Springs Board. Um, at the August 1st board meeting of uh, board of directors meeting, there was a public comment asking for clarity on the next steps for the consolidation project. This comes after the motion passed on July 18th to fund the construction of the Bracken Bray and Forest Springs Consolidation Phase 1 pipeline project using the combination of the remaining grant money from the Department of Water Resources Small Community Drought Relief Program and debt financing. The Forest Springs Board of Directors is committed to making decisions that benefit our community and believes in collaborating with SLB to achieve these goals. We've appreciated Mr. Fruess and are grateful for his outreach following the August 1st meeting, meeting, which helped us better understand the steps being taken by the staff to move the project forward. The Forest Springs community is committed to being a collaborative partner in this effort, and we truly value the district's dedication to this project. Now, from this outreach, we learned that critical activities are already underway. My question is, is the goal of presenting a construction contract to the Board of Directors for approval still set to October 24th? 2024. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Frost, could you answer that question? 
yes, we are still on schedule to uh, issue the bids momentarily, and then the award should be at the October meeting. I believe that's the October 3rd meeting, so that's currently the schedule. Thank you. Um, Scott, could you please elevate me? I'm not participating. CTV, can you please elevate Brian Fruce to panelist? Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Jeff Campbell. Hello, I'm Jeff Campbell from Brackenbrae. I'm a taxpayer and a registered voter for the Board of Directors. Our community entered our community entered a binding letter of intent by the district, which was approved by our community in 2022. After this agreement was finalized, we were disappointed that under the new management, our project has stalled. For the past nine months, putting our FEMA funds at risk, we are now unable to move forward with the necessary steps for consolidation. Despite our efforts, the interim manager has refused to meet with our water commissioner, and we have been requesting a meeting since April to develop a strategy to progress. The board has instructed the interim manager to agendize a working session four times, yet we have still unable to meet. This is important to ensure that our community, Bracken Bray, has safe drinking water and water suppression. We, we system is failing and we need to act now. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next is Karen Vitale. Hi, this is Karen Vitale. I'm a member of the board at Forest Springs, and I would like to address um, the fact that we do we are at a very critical point in the consolidation activities, and we'd like to see a standing item for reporting on these activities on the board agenda until we see some consistent and uh, progress on these. We feel that the community is becoming um, polarized and concerned largely due to a lack of transparency, whether things are happening, whether they're not happening is unclear. And we feel um, very frustrated uh, to, to see this polarization developing and the lack of community um, a consistent position by the community, how, how this is all going forward. So we're asking for uh, that. Um, with regard to additional information um, in my public comment, I'm sorry, this is a bit of a mashup, but uh, we um, had understood then from the previous uh, question to Eva that um, it is then not necessary that um, the uh, consolidation project have meet some sort of prioritization study threshold or that the debt financing is issued in order for our project to go forward and a contract to be awarded in, Oct in October. Is that correct? Yes. Sorry, could you repeat the question? Okay, so, so based on the fact that we're on target for an October bid award, is the debt funding being issued at all gating to the award of that contract and for construction to start? That's the first part of the question. Uh, Barbara, help me out here because I want to be careful what I say because this is not an agendized item, but I, I guess I can say that we have, we have to do something about the financing and that's likely in September. Um, but I can't say, it's not on the agenda, Karen, so I can't speak to all the details, I think. Um, Barbara, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm, I, I don't know the answer to the question. So I'm, yeah, I, I mean, we hear the comment and can indicate that there'll be a, a, an item on the agenda in September to address that comment. 
Okay, yeah, I guess the concern that we're considering having here is um, that, um, you know, at our last meeting, we asked, okay, what are next steps? And although um, we were told what the next steps were at the meeting that we had with Brian, and those were very clear, what we don't have is a sense of, okay, then what comes next in order for the contract to be issued and for construction to get started? If, in fact, this debt financing is so necessary and important, why was the finance committee canceled for this month? And why are we not putting this uh, debt financing approval on the agenda? So these things are just, the, the visibility of all of this is extremely difficult. And we don't understand what the process is to finally get this project started up. So I think this is the gist of the concerns today. How do we get going? How do we start? And we understand what staff is doing. What we don't understand is what then does the board have to do and what the, how many more steps are there after the staff completes their work in order that, that the project actually starts. So um, I, I know I'm not being very articulate here, but things are happening on the fly that we didn't expect. So it, it sounds like that some of those questions and, and, and perhaps the board will direct all those questions be uh, responded to at the next meeting and be part of the agenda for that meeting. Well, so the concern we have is that's what we heard the last time we asked the question of what's next, okay, was that it would be the, the what's next would come at the next meeting. Well, we didn't hear that, and now we see the, that the financing is off. The finance committee meeting was canceled, and financing is not on the agenda. So it's very concerning when we see things go to the next meeting, quote, unquote, and then the next meeting happens and those items are not up for discussion. There is a financing item on the agenda tonight that will bring some clarity to that, Karen. The other bit is that, yes, when we award by October, we do plan to make sure to make a small change to make sure that the financing works for the Bracken Bay. Okay. And for Springs, excuse me, for the consolidation for the okay. bank the project. Right, so, and that's something beyond, that we're going to approve, right? Point of order. Yes, Bob. I, I think we're getting, I mean, I understand the issue, but I think we're getting a little far afield of sort of a question and yes. getting an answer. Yes. Right. Right. So we have we have the question. We'll have to come back with the answer at when we uh, have it all formulated. And I don't think we can formulate it in real time here. Okay. Let's move on then. Okay, let's move on here. The next next person, Penny Bryant. Uh, Penny Bryant, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, okay. My name is Penny Bryant. I've been a resident of Forest Springs for about 11 years. I spent um, around seven of those on the board of Forest Springs. Um, I was heavily involved in the community, particularly at the CZU. And I'm very aware of all the complexity of being on a board. I know there's a lot to being on the board and all the agenda items and so on. That being said, I would like to request that the consolidation become an ongoing agenda item until um, basically until it's approved. Um, and this is such an important dear topic to so many of us. I mean, water is essential, right? And we are looking at like Forest Springs water system was old and falling apart. And then we got burnt and our volunteers have made heroic efforts, like almost Herculean efforts to keep the water system going. We have made a lot of progress since the last time I was on the board. Um, and we are committed to working with the SLV water district, um, but we would like to, again, I wanna echo what Karen said, we'd like to have uh, the requests for, we'd like to request that uh, ongoing information be addressed at uh, each meeting. And um, we'd also like to request clear and transparent communication on all of this. Um, phase one is solid. It's substantially supported by the current grant that we have, which 
will expire soon. So we would really like to urge the board to continue to work on this and let us move forward with consolidation. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker, Joseph Martinez. Uh, I'm guessing you didn't hear me talking. <laughs> um, okay. Hello, my name is Joseph Martinez for Springs Boulder Creek. Uh, I'm strongly in support of the consolidation efforts for Forest Spring and Bracken Bray neighborhoods, as I am a resident of Forest Springs. However, I believe the community as a whole should be strongly in support of this consolidation. In recent meetings, board members have stated the need to dive more deeply into the documents of the consolidation. This consolidation effort is more than a simple interconnection between SLV Water District and an ailing or failing water provider. The project includes a new mainline to new tanks and incorporation of many new ratepayers. Our traditional consolidation brings with it many years of maintenance and headaches. Once complete, the Forest Springs Bracken Bray consolidation expands SLB Water District's footprint, income, water storage, and even provides the potential of a future surface collection treatment that was previously used at the top of Reservoir Road. The further costs of the district are minimal as grants are being sought or in place to cover the planned construction costs. As such, the district should prioritize committing to funding and contracting of the work this month. The district reviewed funding options for future construction and alluded to wanting to review potential other options for funding, but a bond purchase seemed the obvious and only option for future funding. Why the SLV Water District is not committing to a bond sale at this point seems to be a means of stalling their commitment to the consolidation efforts. Please consider adding an agenda item to this and future meetings for the Forest Springs and Bracken Bray consolidation, rather than the apparent pocket veto the district's recent actions imply by failing to include the consolidation as an agenda item, nor holding committee meetings as committed to, despite being raised at the last several meetings. Um, that was the end of my prepared statement. Uh, what also, I'm on, uh, I report to several community college boards and a citizen bond oversight committee. Uh, they're required to publicly disclose um, reasons for meetings being canceled and provide the new dates for them. Um, lack of quorum, uh, natural disaster. Um, I'm curious if there's any requirements um, for public disclosure of cancellation of planned meetings. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Bo Johnson. I actually asked a question there. Sorry, at the end. Is, is there any requirement for disclosure of why meetings are canceled? Barbara, can you answer that? Committee meetings, committee meetings can be canceled. There's no set requirement that you discuss why something's canceled like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on, Bo Johnson. There, is that better? We you can, can hear. hear. Uh, so I am I'm from Bracken Bray also, and I'm a previous board member uh, in and uh, for three years. I'm, I'm well aware of what we have been going through. Um, and I just wanted to stress it. I, I would like to just reiterate that I agree with Jeff Campbell's comments. He did a good job of explaining our total frustration. But I, I want you to understand what effort we've gone to. We put in hundreds of hours into the FEMA documents, into understanding our letter of intent, uh, proposed agreement, uh, the community has been working for a long time, uh, and, and particularly, I'd like to point out, Nicole, uh, as our water commissioner, has, has really extended a great deal of effort. And I hope that's appreciated by this board, because it seems like we work hard, 
we think we have to approve something in a certain amount of time, and then the board or SLV Water District doesn't seem to act on it, and it's very frustrating. Um, our project has stalled, you know, for the past, what, since the 2023, and uh, certainly our funding is, uh, is a concern that we have as a community because we don't have a lot of money. But despite all these efforts, the interim manager, and I've watched this, I've been on other meetings, has refused to meet with our water commissioner, which I totally don't understand, even though we've been requesting a meeting since last April to develop a strategy. Uh, the, as we have already heard, the board has instructed the interim manager to agendize a working session four times, and yet we still have not been able to meet. I am so frustrated. I am trying to get ready for these meetings, and it seems like it's a dead end street. We just don't hear anything. I don't, it's not a, I've been on boards before. This is not what I have seen in the past. I'd say this is important to ensure that we get safe drinking water and uh and our our whole process is really uh taking a long time which we do not understand uh our system is failing in addition to all the time we put in writing documents and preparing re you know preparing requests to fema we put in hours and i would say that's in the hundreds also just keeping our system going until we can connect with you mm -hmm. uh, so with that i encourage the board to uh, uh, follow some of the recommendations that we just heard. Thank you. Thank you. Next person is Bill's iPhone. Uh, Bill, when you come on, please identify who you really are. I don't think your last name is iPhone. I'm not hearing anything. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah, my name is Bill Barrage, and I'm Nicole's husband. And I live in Brackenbrae, as you can guess. And I want to know if Brian can hear me specifically. Brian, are you there? He can hear you. Okay, good. I'm going to try my best not to lose my cool but please hear me out my wife nicole works tirelessly and selflessly to advance this project of consolidation she had a great relationship with rick and others that have subsequently left your organization as soon as brian came on board things went south since then he has stonewalled been rude, yes. threatened my wife before one of your board meetings in the parking lot, and has refused to work with her since then. She has an excellent grasp of how to manage projects like this, as well as a duty to our community and FEMA. Shame on you as a board, and shame on you, Brian, for letting this happen. How could you hire and ultimately condone this behavior? It's beyond my comprehension. He is unfit for this position or anyone, any other position that requires dealing with the public. Do the right thing as a board and get rid of this guy now. He's a liability to your organization. Forest Springs, this is a wake-up call to you. Get your head out of the sand and, and ask for something better. Bring back Rick in the interim. Plan C. Do it, please. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Barrage. Okay. Did we have Patrick Hanley speak? Not yet. Okay, Patrick Hanley, you're next. Um, Patrick Connolly, are you there? I think they hand it off. Kind of. I don't hear him. 
We'll move on to Stephen Lemke. Uh, hopefully you can hear me now. Um, I'm uh, Stephen Lemke and um, Four Springs. And I just wanted to reiterate, I don't think I can um, articulate better than Eva and Penny and Karen and, and Joseph. Uh, and even the, the, uh, the, the, the passion that we heard from Nicole and Bill. Uh, I, I've been trying to rebuild since the CZU fires. It's four years now in a few, few days. And I, I, I have been stalled on my construction for very similar reasons that I see from this board. Um, it, it's a, just delays, delays and uh, mistakes and miscommunication, and it has real effect on all of us. Uh, so I do in particular urge you to make this a continuing agenda item on the consolidation. Um, keep moving forward and just stop the stop, stop the delays, which are not only is it going to have financial repercussions, but it's also having personal repercussions for, for all of us in Forest Springs and Brackenbury. Thank you. Thank you. Pat doesn't know how to turn on the microphone. Is there a way that Jim or Scott can explain? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Pat, who is trying to speak, Hanley, yes. does not know how to turn on the microphone. Is there a way to explain that? Not. I think CTV can maybe do it. Okay, so when he's in line, is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah. Hi. There he is. There he is. Can you hear me now? Yes, good. All right, this is Patrick Hanley. I'm a member of the Brackenbury community. I'm a previous board member, a member of our water committee. Also, I was a member of our EMA appropriations committee. We worked diligently with Rick Rogers, your legal team and the board in order to develop our letter of intent. I can't tell you how many hours that we as a team put in to get the money from FEMA in order to rebuild our water system. With the understanding that we were going to consolidate with SLV, <clears throat> yeah, it might've been a handshake agreement at the time, but we were fully committed and understood that SLV was committed to helping us restore our water system. I have to say, I am so totally disappointed in the new general manager as compared to the relationship that we had with Rick Rogers. Brian shouldn't be in the position. There's no doubt about it. The way he's treating Nicole is unbelievable and completely disappointing. Really, he shouldn't hold the position. We worked so hard and we put so many hours in getting the money that we need to restore our water system, that it's so completely disappointing now, the way that we've been treated. We met monthly with Rick and God bless his soul, Josh, working with Sandus to develop what we thought was going to be our water system. But since April, and when Brian's taken over the position, nothing has happened at all. I am really hoping that the board will work diligently to help ensure that we do not lose the money that we worked so hard for with FEMA. You can't believe the countless hours that we put in in order to get this money appropriated. The lack of your commitment to help us is just so disappointing. I hope that we can do something to move forward and ensure that every month we meet to make sure that we don't lose the funding that we worked so hard to get. Please, please help us. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. 
Um, I see one last hand up, uh, Chandra. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I just wanted to weigh in on this discussion for Bracken Bray and Forest Springs. I'm not a resident of either, but I've been listening to these meetings and hearing the board push it down the road over and over and over again. And as a community member, I have some concerns about this because the success of these consolidations directly affects the SLV community as an entirety and a whole. The 236 corridor does not have any firefighting capabilities or drought reserve, um, drought reserve abilities without these consolidations because they're bringing storage tanks and pumping abilities and fire uh, hydrants into the area. So I believe that the success of these consolidations is a safety and future uh, water storage and firefighting ability for the SLV and as an entirety. That's thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. We have two more. Uh, Jacqueline Hendricks. Uh, sir. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I showed up a little. Here, the I'm, I'm sorry. We're going to go. Th we're going to go through the online I'm first. The online first here, and then we'll, yes. we'll get the rest of that. Yeah. So, Jacqueline. Hi. 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 I'm Jackie Hendricks. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to kind of reiterate um, what many have already said, and really emphasize the fact that the delays that are going on are causing harm to our communities. I'm a resident of Forest Springs and hearing what Brackenbury has had to say as well. We are being harmed um, by the delays, by the lack of transparency. Um, and we've already been deeply harmed as communities by the CZU fire. Um, if you walk through our neighborhoods, um, there's still skeletons um, where houses used to be. And uh, we can't heal as a community, we can't move forward as a community um, without the infrastructure that, you know, you would serve us through water. And so I just want to support those who've already spoken and really emphasize that um, by not taking action, you're harming real people and your constituents. Thank you. Okay, we have one more online, Sam Linton. And then you, sir, will be next. Hi, this is Yvonne Linton, wife of Sam Linton, standing by here. Member co-owners in, uh, in Forest Springs. And I would just like to know the commitment of the board moving forward on this consolidation and what the reason for the delay is. I feel like there's dysfunction in the board. And I feel like until that gets resolved, that, that our needs will mm -hmm. not be considered. And I wanted to point out that when we consolidate, we will continue to participate in efforts for the grant funding with the DRWR grant. We will bring new user ratepayer into the district. And again, I just wanted to know if there's reasons that people aren't committed to us moving forward on the consolidation. I would just ask that they be more clear to us instead of just stringing us along, because I've yet to hear definite answers. I've asked so many times on what needs to happen for this project, for this funding not to be loose, lost, what needs to be started, and nobody can ever give a straight answer. And I just wanna know how long we will just be stalled and delayed. And I just think it's disrespectful to the people that have put so much heart and soul into this consolidation. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, my name is Emilio Garcia. Uh, I've been living here now, starting my third year at Forest Spring, I'm a homeowner. Uh, things have been rolling pretty good until I mean, recently since uh, the new board started uh, taking over. Um, I just want to know what the hiccups are and are you guys going to meet the deadlines before our, our fundings go away? I mean, is there any way you guys can give us a really good head start that we can start preparing for the worst? Um, I mean, communication with us, SLV has dropped as well. Um, there's 
you guys don't relay any information. You guys just the water pressure is going to drop down to the point where all the pumps start to burn up on our end. Um, we would really appreciate it if you know you guys really work together. And I wasn't really uh, coming to these meetings or even joining them on Zoom. I decided to watch the very first one, and the first one that I that I saw. I left quite quite the impression. <laughs> um, probably pull it a little better. Um, I'm coming here to give support for Four Springs. A lot of the community members there have really, really done a lot of work and working with Brad and Ray. Well, let's just work together. There's times points a lot some fresh water to us. Uh, and there's times where man, we don't even have water. Mm -hmm. We're reaching out to you guys so you guys can provide us with water. And well, what's the drawback? Why slow down? Um, the one thing that I see is, or, or even here, is there's a lot of headphones. Things aren't working great. Or maybe we should close a few people or what was going on. I wish I was a little bit more prepared, but I thought I'd just show face that way, show support for my community and my, the neighborhood that I live in. I don't want to, you know, I really want to bring my family up here because Boulder Creek is a great place. Let's make it, let's, let's keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I see no one else online. Uh, let's close this question session. And Bob, you initiated this, so um, no, we're back to we're back to changes to the agenda. Yes, I think we're back to changes to the agenda at this point. Um, Yes, um, I would like to move that we add the following item ten. Um, excuse me, here I got to check the uh, numbering again. Um, item 10E, uh, Bracken Bray, discussion and possible action by the board to direct interim general manager to approve Sandus to work with Bracken Bray on its construction requirements for FEMA and Bracken Bray's designated representatives. No, and saying this is the uh, contractor. That, yeah, the engineering design contractor. Someone needs to move. In, in order to, again, in order to add agenda item, especially one for discussion and action, <clears throat> there needs to be a declaration of emergency for that item. So, funny. right, sorry. And that the board uh, find and declare an emergency uh, due to um, Bracken Bray's funding expiring uh, shortly. You know, are you about that again? What's the do for the emergency? Exactly. We see CTV to mute. CTV, can you mute all attendees, please? Okay. So Barbara was still speaking, I believe. Yes, Barbara, you're, I think, still speaking. Yes. I just, I, I think I finished. I just indicated that you needed, a, you know, a, in order to add the items to the agenda, you need to make a declaration by the majority of the board members that there's an emergency basis to add that agenda item. And just would add that there was authority given to Sanders to work with Bracket Bray on the scope of work that they need for FEMA. Shall I try to go through it again? Please. Uh, item 10E, discussion and possible action by the board to direct interim general manager to approve Sanders to work with Bracken Bray and its designated representatives to address their requirements to uh, extend FEMA funding and that the board finds that there is an emergency uh, requiring this access due to Bracken Bray's imminent potential loss of FEMA funding. I will second that. Okay. We want to take 
No. All right. Is this, well, uh, we can have a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. We should. yeah. You need a you need a discussion, and if there's any public comment, just like any other item. Yes. Okay. May a uh, so. Or is it appropriate to staff comments at this time? If the board would like to hear from the staff, yes. Okay. Please. Okay. I'm going to read the letter, the email that I wrote today. Uh, this email serves as authorization for Nicole Welder of Brackenbrae Country Club to access all design drawings and specifications associated with the Brackenbrae and Fort Springs Mutual Water Company Consolidation Project. Brackenbrae will contract to pay status directly for this effort, including preparing an SOW, which is a scope of work for FEMA, bid prep and construction management. Hence, any and all costs associated with the above shall be sole responsibility of Brackenbrae to come and shall not in any way be billed to the district. As a condition of allowing this access, all parties understand and agree that the district, specifically the interim general manager and the engineering manager, shall be copied on all correspondence between Brackenbrae Country Club and Sanders. Please let me know if you have any questions. I want to add that we've actually asked um, for quite some time to get the language we need so that we could somehow be remunerated for this or that they would agree to pay. And I have a long list of emails that, that testify to that, that actually everything that you're being told is quite the contrary. Staff's been pushing this thing along from the get-go. I don't see the emergency, certainly. Um, and we do have on schedule, the next thing on schedule, we approved the 1.4 million funding. We need to change something in that, but we're on schedule, right? We're on schedule October 3rd to award, so to issue the bids. Um, so we had a long back and forth. Barbara, you can testify this. There was a number of back and forth just to make sure that we could have clarity of who's going to pay for what, because ratepayers, district ratepayers, can't pay for the consolidation. That's already been made very clear by the board. Mm -hmm. As it is, we're already loaning our staff time and legal time. But yes, ratepayers are paying for that. So I think there's a lot of hyperbole here, a lot of false statements, some very false statements, and I really clear the water here. And Barbara, I'm asking you directly, you need to kind of make some clear, make clear and confirm what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah, like I've indicated now a couple times, I had a conversation with Brack and Brain folks yesterday, and in order to ensure that they're not losing any FEMA dollars, what could we do and what needed to be done? And that was the immediate ask. So um, that's, and, and there needed to be clarification on who was paying for what, that is true. So. Any other discussion that you have on this agenda item? Any other discussion from or a comment from the public? I understand she's there. Okay. okay. That was it. That, I didn't know if you are still speaking. So. Okay. Um, okay. You know what, President and I, I'm, I'm going to read another email. No, I, I don't. I, I have to object. So I am point not. Of order, I I point of order. Wait, wait, wait. You cannot attack me. Point of order is public comment. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, staff is there. Yeah, there's staff is still chat, still discussing the item. I, I, I'm not sure I'm whether sorry. we're open to public I, comment. I thought staff yeah. completed. I thought staff completed reading the uh, memo, and it's time for public comment. Thank you, Barbara. I will continue. Um, I want to indicate that after our first meeting, Nicole went out of her way to communicate to everybody in the di district except me. And 
I had to write a very, I mean, I could give you an idea of the kind of my communication. Hi, Nicole. I hope this message finds you well. I want to take a moment to discuss our communication practices regarding requests directed to district so staff. To ensure efficiency and alignment with our organization, I kindly request that you copy me on all correspondence involving tax or tasks or inquiries directed to district staff. This allowed me to stay informed and provide any necessary support or guidance to ensure a smooth progress. I understand that this adjustment might have require a small shift in your current workflow, and I genuinely appreciate your cooperation in implementing this program call. By working together in this manner, I believe we can enhance collaboration and effectiveness of our respective teams. Thank you for your attention in this manner, and I look forward to your continued collaboration. To which she replies, thank you for reaching out. We agree that communication is crucial for successful collaboration. And onward and onward, but the point is, staff has done gone Overboard to bend over backwards. Nicole Wander Barrett wants all the money, the DWR money, to make her whole with the crack and break. And then I don't I don't want to point of order, please. Yeah, I would I would also interrupt as well. We have yes. a particular item that's being discussed, and I, I think we're getting off okay. the, yes. the, the yeah. item. The item was to change the was to add an item to the agenda. And right. we seem to be discussing the item before we have actually added it to the agenda. Right. Just giving some context. So, no. so um, we have an item on the floor. Do you care to uh, comment on Bob's motion? Thank you. On Director Fultz's motion. because that's where um, we are right now. I, I think it's unfair for someone to be able to speak. And I think that the original email should be written, read into record what I asked for him to write that communication protocol. So it is my three minutes. I'm going to state this and then I'm going to answer. I'm going to speak to the motion. It was, hi, Garrett. Hope this email finds you well. Would it be possible for you or Sandus to forward the initial engineering report prepared by Sandus in August of 2022 it addresses the DIP, that is the ductile iron pipe diameter size as it relates to water flow and friction loss. I have searched my emails and only have found the diagram showing the pressure relationship to the water tank elevation. Thank you in advance for your help. This was on February 22nd. Then he wrote that protocol. And in the follow-up email, I asked him to restate the monthly meetings. That to me is not out of line. It was a document that is public record that Sanders didn't feel comfortable giving and asked me to get it from Garrett. That's what I did. I, I, I can't, uh, that is not excessive. Okay, so, so now I'm going to speak to this. Can we please it's stick true. to the agenda item? Please. Thank you. That's, that's Thank not you. the agenda Absolutely. item at the moment. Um, it is true. I, um, yesterday at 5, um, I don't even know what time it was, at 3.30 to 4.30, in the afternoon, we did speak to council. The reason why we spoke to council is because Brian Cruz told our our president that he refuses to work with me. Okay, number one. So you need to understand that. Number two, I explained to her the first thing we need is the ability to package up the scope of work so we can get a version to release the money that is obligated. The second thing is because... There is no more monthly meetings and there is no um, discussion after phase one. We need to start positioning ourselves for a physical permanent work project that Cal OES is stressing to us or we're going to lose our female thing. So we did reach out to Sanders and said, what would it take if we hired you to do professional services? The email that I wrote staff said, we requested from Sanders this. We did agree to pay three different ad services for standards for stuff that was related to FEMA. The stuff that got designed that's in the May 2023 that's not funded is not, it was done under the Department of Water Resources. The intent was to go out to bid together. I cannot control the fact that there's no discussion about how that happens. So I did ask for that. We did get that permission yesterday. Um, I will reach out to Sandus and any contract that needs to be negotiated should be between Crap and Gray and Sandus at this point. But in regards to scope of work, what is required from consolidation still requires conversation. Yes, okay? it does. And so that is so not I, I, 
You're going to silence me. Thank you. I'm not silencing you. I'm asking no, I'm the council. Well, I'm, I'm, we're asking I'm, to focus on what the actual I'm, motion was, which was should we change the agenda? I, I would like to hear from Nicole if the um, suggestion for the agenda item to be added is of any value at this point. Bob, I appreciate your effort with the motion, but as you can tell, um, legal counsel stepped in last yesterday afternoon to the, do the very first step but there are a number of steps that need to happen in order for us to continue to secure the FEMA money. It is not good enough just to put in the scope of work. That is one piece of it. We have to build, we have to build it or we lose the money. And yeah. so that's why we've been asking for the larger consolidation com um, conversation. If, if we can't do it with staff because they've been told not to work with us and the general manager is unable to work with us, we cannot afford to work through a legal counsel person and pay, I don't know what the rate would be at 250 an hour to negotiate this. This has to happen at the board level. So um, your motion today has been dealt with yesterday, but there is much more that needs to happen. Okay, I, I, okay, I get that. But if we don't need the motion right now, that's great. I will withdraw my motion. I will acknowledge that the broader conversation needs to be had. That was the original thing I did. The board is not prepared to move forward in that. I did not give a second on that. So I would draw this motion if things are in, uh, in process to allow you to get what you need from Sandus so that you don't lose your FEMA funding. And I will state that we will not bill unless there's a consolidation agreement because we cannot afford a million dollars on the ground if there is not a true partnership with SLD, and that's not what's happening right now. We will have to rebuild and start treating our own water. I, I hear you. Uh, the, um, the, I do have another motion for, uh, and, uh, well, no, never mind, not for this agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on. Um, for the record, staff has no changes to the agenda process. Okay. We've had, uh, we've gone through changes to the agenda. We've had extensive oral communications, unfinished business. There is none listed, no business, reserve policy and working capital. Does staff care to? Uh, yes, I believe we have uh, Heather to present. Thank you. Good evening, board. Heather Ipoletti, senior advisor with RGS, serving as an interim finance director for the district. The proposed action before you this evening is to direct the interim general manager to bring a revised reserve policy to the budget and finance committee for their review and input. A little background. On June 7th of 2021, board adopted a resolution approving a reserve fund based on GASB 54. GASB 54 applies to governmental funds, not enterprise funds. Water and sewer utility funds are considered enterprise funds. Government Finance Officers Association recommends that local governments adopt a target amount of working capital or reserve to maintain in their enterprise fund. Starting with the audited financial statements focusing on the current and non-current assets and liabilities, it is possible to calculate working capital, which equals current assets less current liabilities. A measure of working capital indicates the liquid portion of total enterprise fund capital, which constitutes a margin or buffer for meeting obligations. The current policy has six parts, including restricted balances and a compensated absence reserve. If adjusted working capital was a basis for calculating the reserve, the restricted funds and the compensated absence balance would already be taken into consideration. A possible proposed policy would include an operating reserve and a capital reserve, similar to what's already in the policy, minus the other items. With that said, it's appropriate to present this proposal to the Budget and Finance Committee for their input. In a related matter, staff was asked to present a detailed cash flow projection. 
The calculation of the beginning unrestricted working capital is the first step when preparing cash flow projection. Months ago, when staff calculated the beginning working capital for fiscal year 23-24, staff used a combination of the 22-23 financial statements and the trial balance from the district's accounting system for the calculation. While the figures were accurate in total, the breakdown between unrestricted and restricted was not correct, resulting in an understatement of unrestricted funds totaling a little over $4 million. While the need for the issuance of debt is still anticipated, with this information, urgency has been eliminated. Staff are in the process of preparing project cash flow projection as requested and expect that to be completed within the next month. That concludes my report. Thank you. Do we have any board comments or staff comments? Let's staff first. Well, I just I wanted to sum this up and then uh, I think first off it's due to Heather's uh, good work that we actually have this information now. And she discovered the discrepancy in how the uh, two accounting systems. Uh, so I think it's to her credit. Um, we're very fortunate for somebody that's a consultant that works 16 hours a week for us while we're looking for a full-time finance person. Um, and I think, President, you may have some comments to add that could be related to me. But I also just want to point out what this does is it uh, lessens the urgency for the immediacy of going out for uh, the financing that we were considering. Um, Four million extra dollars, it looks like we can push things out a little bit. And hence, that's why we didn't bring back the debt financing this time. It's rather we're bringing this item to show you. Hey, instead, we have this. This is where we are. So there isn't this urgency at the moment. We do want to bring it back to the Budget and Finance Committee first with the new policy, et cetera, and, and run it through the run it through the channels. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to make one comment on this, which is that that policy stated 2021. At the time, it was reviewed by the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, the only people left on the board from back then is our uh, Director Smalley and Director Fultz, but it, it was reviewed by the Budget and Finance Committee the finance director that was in place at the time and legal counsel at that time. Uh, subsequently, the next year, it was also looked at by the Budget and Finance Committee and the uh, director of finance and legal counsel because there were a few little changes made and nobody noticed it. Um, we also went through two extensive complete system audits during that period of time and nobody noticed that they had written referenced the wrong paragraph of law to uh, determine the size of the reserve. So um, I just want everyone to know that this isn't something that just popped up last week or something like that. This is uh, an error was made oh, at least three years ago, perhaps four years ago. I haven't been able to find the po prior policy and uh, a long series of finance directors and attorneys and uh, auditors have looked looked at that and not seen it. So I actually give a lot of credit to Heather to find, for finding that. So um, are there any other board comments? I have one question on it. Um, so Heather, um, as I'm reading this, are we overly conservative by having the compensated absence in both the reserve and in the current liabilities? It's, it, um, yes, sure. I, I would say you're over conservative, but in reality, it doesn't make sense to have the compensated absences in your reserve policy because it's essentially already being deducted. It's right. already, you're, you're taking, you're already reducing it. So yeah. it, 
if, okay. if you're if you're interested in a more conservative policy, you would increase the percentage of your operating reserve. You would right. not just put something in. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really make sense. Okay. Okay. That's the only question I had on. Thank right. you. Thank you. Comments from the public on this. Uh, Excuse me, Jeff. You're Bob? you're oh. you're not looking at my hand up. I, I'm if sorry, you'd Bob. Like, if you'd like me to oh, yeah. interrupt you, I will go we'll forward. We'll let Bob go forward. Yeah, sorry, uh, Bruce. Um, yeah. Okay, so actually the only person left on the board and uh, staff, I think, that has knowledge of this is me. Uh, this was actually done in 2019 under uh, Nossiman, Gina, uh, and uh, Stephanie Hill, who was the finance director at the time. Um, there was a lengthy conversation about this, and I, I could go back and find this. Um, I, I did have a question. Heather, are we... Is what you're saying we're not uh, covered under GASB, that we'd be covered under FASB? Or are you saying that GASB 54 is an incorrect part of GASB that we were, that Stephanie and Gina and everybody else had been using? Policy references GASB 54. Your, your funds are only enterprise funds, and GASB 54 does not apply to enterprise funds at all. So we're, and, we're not... And, we, we are not, our accounting systems are not covered under, are not assessed under GASB. They're assessed under FASB? No, you're assessed under GASB, but specifically GASB 54 does not apply to enterprise funds, only governmental funds. And what part of GASB then are we covered under? A whole lot of them. There's many GASBs out there. But not each 54. One 5054 is a GASB, but it only applies to governmental funds. Most local governments, um, local governments are, are covered under GASB, and most local governments have both types of funds, governmental funds and enterprise funds. You, the district, only has enterprise funds. That specific GASB 54 only applies to governmental funds. And it's looking at fund balance. A governmental fund has a fund balance where an enterprise fund has net assets. It's yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I don't have, uh, I have to go back and review any notes from that. But again, I think in light of the ongoing uh, disaster profile that uh, our district unfortunately suffers from, I think there was um, a sense that we needed to be a little bit, and, and the fact that our reserves had been taken down under previous administrations to dangerously low levels, I think there was a sense that we needed to uh, rebalance that. Now, having said that, I wanted to offer some other um, uh, context here um, because I'm not exactly sure what we're what we're trying to do. The reason that Olympia Assessment District and Fire Surcharge um, are set up as restricted funds in that way is that they were to be, excuse me, specifically used for specific purposes. That is, we weren't to take that money, put it into a big pot, and then use it for other things. Um, that, especially on the fire surcharge, that was a very contentious part of doing the surcharge, and ultimately the board agreed that we would be accounting for all of that separately. It wouldn't be part of, uh, it wouldn't be included in revenue, it'd be broken out separately, reports would be done separately, et cetera. So if what we're talking about doing here is taking that money and throwing it back into a big pot, I I'm a little confused about that. Yeah, no, I definitely would not do that. Um, as um, if you were to look at my attached exhibit, did I actually break it out fully? No, but, you start with where um, most enterprise funds, as recommended by GFOA, starts with your financial statements, your current assets, minus your current liabilities. But then you adjust that current assets for any restricted funds. So you would pull out that fire surcharge. You would pull out that assessment money sitting in your current assets, okay? So that's what I would call your adjusted working capital, okay? And that's what you then reduce, you, you reduce that adjusted working capital by any reserve that the, the board would, would adopt. And I would, like I suggested to Director Smalley, if you're interested in 
making your reserve more larger, more conservative, then I would recommend you increasing the, the percentage of operating expenses to make well, the, that reserve the, larger and more conservative. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea, we did have a discussion back then as to whether we should be setting aside three, four, or six months of operating expenses. We weren't yeah. doing it as a percentage. Um, based on all the factors, we started out at three, and sometimes subsequent to that, we increased it to four. We were trying to get to six, but you know there wasn't really the ability to do that and have enough money in the capital uh, yep. reserve. The, the reason I might be a little confused, I'm looking at your attachment two on page 16, and I see that the fire surcharge is part of the adjustment. And I wasn't sure if what you were doing there, because it, the four, that's $4 million, you add up that and the un, unspent debt proceeds. And I was like, well, that $4 million then is close to the $4 million you said that we found that we can use for other purposes. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not sure how that happens. Your, your, your fire surcharge on that exhibit, at least um, I'm, I'm looking at it attachment two. Yeah, and that's the two. that's the that's the June thirtieth of twenty three um, yes. balances, which would ideally be your beginning working capital for June thirtieth of twenty four. The fire surcharge balance is again at the top. I started with straight from your financial statements. Then we're adjusting that for things like restricted amounts, and so I'm subtracting the one point seven seven eight, which is your actual balance as of that time for your fire surcharge, at least what's on your financial statements. So yes, that's what was on your financial statements. But the actual balance of your fire church surcharge was, was a negative 36 as of June 30th of 23. You had spent 36,000 more than you had actually received as of that time. That's one of the adjustments that was not done at year end. Oh, so that is an error in the, uh, what you're saying then is that was the error in terms of the financial statements that were prepared as well as the auditor's um, oversight, I guess. Is that? Um, I, I'd say, I, I don't want to, um, I believe that the auditors didn't catch it, but it's the district's financial statements. It's the district's financial statements to present their financial statements fully adjusted to the auditors. So these adjustments were not made by staff when they were provided for the auditors and then the auditors did not catch it otherwise. Okay. okay. I have since arriving in October, I have done extensive calculations and have a lot of spreadsheets to make sure that I know fully by year, what should have been in that fire surcharge account and what should have also been in your um, unspent bond proceeds by year so that those amounts could be adjusted. Actually, I'm doing them on a monthly basis. Okay, well, I mean, we also need to keep in mind that the debt proceeds were also um, were also incurred based on specific projects being done. Yes. And that in order for us to change those, uh, those um, projects, we would have to do a board resolution. And it was a little unclear whether we needed to get the uh, the, the buyers to to through the representatives to agree to that. So again, when I see things like this happening in terms of the millions of dollars, I, I, I appreciate the work that's gone into it. Hopefully, it, you know, everything ticks and ties, but I do get a little nervous because both of these are around commitments, not only that we've made to third parties, but we've made to our community that we will spend this money in particular ways and not do what boards have done in the past, a decade ago or more, where they took all the money, put it in a big pot, told the community they were going to use it for one thing and spend it on another. I, we can't go back to those days. I, I appreciate your concern and I agree with your concern. And on a monthly basis in that monthly finance report, in that report, you'll see a, a sh one sheet that details out what we're spending on that unspent bond proceeds and what we're spending using um, fire surcharge. And the um, projects that are on that list for, um, for bond proceeds agree with the resolutions for which were adopted. I'm fully aware of those restrictions. And there is, I know from working with um, bond council 
for the possible new bond, future possible new bond, that it is restrictive. You, it's not just a board resolution. You have to get approval from yeah. from your from your um, fiscal agents. So yep. it is restricted to those resolutions. And um, I have been reporting on that monthly how we're spending the money, whether by surcharge or bond proceeds or reserves on a monthly basis by project. Okay, so uh, so basically, if we go back and look at last month's report, we'll see these numbers in your revised column. Correct. You know, you will see you will see how I'm spending the money and the balance as of um, June thirtieth of of twenty three is actually one of the reports that is um, included on a monthly basis. Okay. Last thing is on the compensated absences. Um, I think the reason that was put in, again, I have to go back and look at my notes for sure, but um, the, the, the district doesn't have a use it or lose it policy um, for all of the vacation uh, time that people can accrue, um, as is common now in the, in the private sector. In fact, in the private sector, there's a lot of companies that don't have an official vacation policy any longer in order to take that off the books, right? It's a big li liability, particularly for big companies. Um, and so this was more to take into account if staff started leaving in larger numbers than what was expected in order to make sure we had cash available without upsetting all the rest of the operating uh, uh, aspects of the district to deal with the fact that people might need to be paid for, you know, hundreds of hours of accumulated um, time. Um, right. And so that was another read. Now, if you're saying, well, we can take care of that by uh, increasing it from four months to six months in the operating. OK, but I, I want to make sure people understand why that was put in there. It wasn't to deal with, you know, the one person leaving. It was a deal with, you know, a group of people over a short period of time retiring or deciding they wanted to leave or what have you, given the demographics of our staff at the time. Your the. Um... The leave that is is not use it or lose it, which is usually for most agencies, it is is your vacation time. Many of the other leaves are use it or lose it. But upon upon, upon exiting the agency, the vacation time, you're right, is 100% paid out. Yeah. That calculation of that amount as of June 30th assumes 100% of your employees are leaving at June 30th. That is the liability on your books at June 30th, is 100% of their leave accumulated as of that time. And there is a calculation, an estimate done, where a portion of it is in current liabilities and a portion of it is in long-term liabilities. So when you're taking working capital, current assets minus current liabilities, you are already taking that estimated amount for the amount that is going to be spent in the next um, 12 months. So and that, that's and that why I'm is saying. Available. And that cash Correct. Is, it's already, that, that it's already right. You're, when you're using working capital as your starting point, it's already that, 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 the, that cash, that unrestricted cash is already being reduced by that liability that is on your books at June 30th. So, All right. Well, I, I mean, I, I think having a, a more in-depth conversation in committees has has merit. Um, so, OK, uh, you know, policies can change over time. Um, but based on what I saw so far, I was a little concerned that we were talking about reducing these down from the six or so we have to just to. I think I heard that's not the case, but. Uh, again, uh, we can see that in more detail in committee. I look forward to it. Okay. Do we have any other comments from the board? Do we have comments no. from the public on this? Mr. Holloway. Thanks. Um, I knew when I came here that I had more questions and comments than I do in three minutes, um, and I feel like I even have more now. Um, so, when when you find four million dollars, uh, that sounds like a good thing. Um, and I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth, but I there's a lot here that I don't understand. 
So I guess my first question is, will the audits and financial statement for 2023 be restated? And will the 2022 one be restated? That's just a simple yes or no. I don't think we've made a decision on that. I said I don't believe any decision has been made on that. Well, I thought Heather could just tell me yes or no. Or, I mean, it'll be discussed at the committee level. Why are you shaking your head? I don't understand. Council, can we be careful about back and forth? Yes. So okay. Okay. Um, about the agenda yes. item. Yes. One of the things that's going wrong here is that this needs to be a board meeting. It's not a Brian meeting for Brian to interrupt every single question or comment. It's a board meeting, and the board president should be controlling the flow. Shouldn't be Brian interrupting and then asking. Can you, can you please questions. keep to the agenda item that you're commenting upon? Thank you. Yes. I would like to, but Brian continues to interrupt. Um, okay, I guess I'm just going to skip to the parts that, that are wrong. On page 15, uh, there's an amount for the for the COVID loan, and it shows a balance for uh, 2023 of 14.1 on this piece of paper. But what the audited financial statement shows is 13.8. And you can tell by reading this that if there were 600,000 in principal payments, that, that the 23 balance would have to be 13.8. So that 14.1 is incorrect. That means that the, the 31 million is actually something less than 31 million at the bottom of that column. So there's an error in this table. Um, when I look at page 16, I can see the $4 million. But the beauty of uh, double entry bookkeeping is that there's usually some compensating error. So if, if there's an error here, there's an error somewhere else. And I just don't understand. Um, and I see the clock ticking, so I guess I'm not going to be able to ask everything. The I totally understand that... Um, that the vacation balance is a current liability. I, I think it's a current liability, but I couldn't tell from the discussion whether it was partly current and partly a long-term li liability. But I think it's a current liability, so I understand why that doesn't need to be double counted. But I guess I don't understand about the these fund balances. For one thing, there's I've looked for fire surcharge restricted balance on the audited financial statements, and it's not there. Um, and that's one of three so, balances here. And so are those restricted balances not part of the enterprise fund current assets? Is that what you're saying? That, that those restricted balances are not included in current assets? Um, I so, guess I have lots more questions. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Okay. Sure. Karen Vitale. Hi, um, I'd like to understand um, some of the consequences of this discussion of the $4 million. So um, the first being, um, if, uh, if this $4 million is um, actually available and it's agreed upon the finance committee that it is, is that therefore slowing the need for the bond funding and therefore the consolidation contract can be issued in October? Is, is that a fair uh, description of this, the order of operations here? So I do not believe we know at this point uh, because the board has only just seen these numbers a couple of days ago and uh, I think that's something we have to look at, but I don't believe we know. Okay, so then, Karen, yeah. Karen, we are stewarding this with that in mind. Okay, All of this. yeah, so that this is my, there There was a process, thanks, thank you for that comment, but um, there's a process put in place where there was supposed to be a prioritization of the capital projects. And my question is, um, where where is the priorit prioritization of the projects 
uh, with respect to need for that piece of it, with respect to the fact that there's this now four, potentially $4 million of working capital, does that prioritization still have to happen with the consolidation floating to the top of that list in order to get a chunk of that money? Or has the prioritization process disappeared? Again, Karen, that's, all of these things are definitely at the forefront of our yeah. strategy or, you know, answering yeah, all of these. Yes. It's, again, this is, this is an hour. So, yes. Um, I, I can't comment too much because it's not agendized, but I, I can tell you that staff is well aware of all the moving parts. Yeah. Okay. So, so is there a plan B if ultimately the finance committee decides that this is not the way to proceed? Uh, but has the debt funding been held up? Uh, for an ex will the debt funding be um, held up to an extent that we don't have we d we can't issue that contract in October and I ask that just to give you you all uh, some thought process around what happens if, if there is a need for a plan B is there one so have Karen, we build our process here so so Karen I'm going to repeat a little differently what I've said before and that is that this is no news to uh, the board and uh, relatively new uh, to staff. And these are issues we have to discuss in committees and we haven't done that yet. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, granted, and, and I, I definitely understand that, but I guess I want to inject some thought process here that, um, that we don't uh, cause some unintended consequences with regard to delay of debt financing that's really needed if this doesn't work out. So I see some urgency here, and I ask that you do consider some of these other factors as well. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Hi, Deborah Lowen, Long Pico Canyon. Uh, Bruce brought up about the fire surcharge, and I would like to just comment that when this was put in place, it was called a restricted fund, but the finance manager, Stephanie Hill at the time said, it did not qualify to be called restricted because restricted was for external only, and this was an, a board decision. And so it, it actually goes by a different designation. I don't have the paper in front of me, um, but there are those various steps there that you see. It could be by board action that the intent of the money is to be used for fire, but it is not technically under the government accounting called a restricted fund. That means, and and besides which, I remember when Kendra was talking about this when the auditor was here, she was trying to break out the money and he was asking, does that include the surcharge or not? And she was going back and forth and he said, I remember extremely, he said, it doesn't matter, it's general fund, according to the auditor, how they treat that fund at, at all. Thank because, you. Because you as a board can, as you voted in place to, designate that money to the fund, you can vote to use it for something else as well. So it is not restricted in the sense that it cannot be used for anything else because you can change that. So any money left over, you can decide to spend on something else. I, I believe we understand that, um, but on particularly in the case of the uh, fire surcharge, there is also the issue of essentially a promise that the board made to the community that that's what it would be used for. Exactly. And promise. we're not going to break that promise. It is a promise and not technically a restricted fund. I understand that. But it is, it is always reported as a restricted fund in district reports, is, but in the audit where Bruce might have not seen yes. it, it is not. Thank you. So I'll make the motion that the board directs the interim general manager to bring a revised Reserve policy to the Budget and Finance Committee for review and input. And I will second that. Do we have any further comments from either the public or the board? I see that Bob has his hand up. Well, I was right. Oh. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Um, as I, as I, I want to make sure this is really clear to the community and, and the board. Um, I've been here long enough to understand the context around the original development of this um, plan and the promises that were made to the community. 
One of the reasons that we made those promises and also about the projects is the board's historical uh, um, performance on meeting promises had not been particularly good. This is prior boards. And we were determined to change that and change that image of the board and the district in the community and, and its perception of us. Um, I will be very focused on making sure that whatever changes are made, this policy in no way, shape or form um, affects those promises and I, I may not be successful in stopping changes, but I will be looking for them to make sure that we are keeping our promises. After all, if we can't be trusted uh, on this, how can we be trusted on the future uh, bonds and all the rest of the money that we're gonna try to raise from the community? Thank you, Director Pulse. Okay, call the roll. President Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Lane? Yes. Director Foltz? Yes. All right. Thank you. Motion passes mm -hmm. unanimously. Next item is board officer nomination. The position of the vice president of the, of the board is currently vacant. Uh, I would call for nominations from the rest of the board. I'd like to nominate Mark Smalley. Okay, is there any other nominations? Okay, I will second that. We'll have a quick vote. All right, President Hill? Yes. Director Lane? Yes. Point of order, point of order. Does this not require any um, request for comment from the public? Oh. Does the public have comments? Gotta ask. Yes, good point, Bob. The public have it. Anyone in the public have comments on this? I don't I see any like online. Uh, I see Karen Vitale's hand is up. No. That was still from last time. But that was yeah. from the last time, I believe. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's a legacy. <laughs> yes. Okay, I see no comments. So. All right, we'll start over. <laughs> President okay. Hill. Yes. Director Lane. Yes. Director Foltz. Yes. And Director Smalley, I guess you get to vote for yourself. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Motion, motion passes. Director Smalley is the vice president of the, of the board. Perfect. If you can't vote for yourself, who can you vote for? Right? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next <laughs> item is committee <laughs> appointments, and I am going to make... Three appointments here. Um, Brian Largay will be the lead uh, representative of the district to the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency. And Alina Lang will be the uh, reserve or second uh, representative. A point of, uh, Jeff, there's two people to get appointed. They are both um, equal in stature. Oh, um, well. There, and then there's a third person that is an alternate. The, that was really unclear in the board packet. I, I read was, it several times. Unclear. Yeah, the, the two people appointed are, are are equals. There's no lead and no secondary. There, there is an alternate, but that is a third person. Okay, just a second. Um, can staff present on this item? Yes, you can present. Thank you. Uh, Director Smalley, congratulations. Um, you are also already a, on the board of directors for San Margarita. Is that correct? Correct. So Director Smalley is now serving. So there's two seats available. Two seats, so one is primary as a director and the other one is the, the other. Um, yes, thank you. So Brian Largay will be primary and you are the alternate. Yes, thank you. And the administration committee, Alina will be appointed to the administration committee. Thank you. Okay. Those are, uh, I, I think we have to vote on that though. Do we have to vote on that? Yes, of course. Yes. So you made a motion, I'm assuming, to, to right. appoint them so we yes. can get a second. Okay. Do I have a second? Uh, I'll second that. Okay. Do we have any public, comment. public comments? 
Uh, could the board comment first? Yes, board comment, please. All right. I mean, I I do try to raise my hand, but it's not clear that's working. Um, I don't I, I want to. I want to reiterate a point that I made at the last meeting, just to make sure we're all on the same page. I, I wish Brian were here because uh, there seemed to be some misunderstanding. Um, the appointments are made by the president. Um, the, the board members are not eligible to object. Now, I suppose, given that Brian objected to being on the admin committee at the last meeting, that Jeff might, you might have changed your mind about that. But uh, it, the board members are required to object, uh, are required to do the work that the president assigns them to, subject to the board's approval. Now, if the board wants to accommodate an individual director saying, no, I don't want to be on a committee, they can always vote the president's recommendation down. But short of that, it is the obligation of the of the uh, board member to serve on the committee to which they've been assigned. As I said in the past, I have been assigned to committees that do not reflect my expertise, and I have done that duty without uh, objection, even though I did not believe it was in the best interest of the district because of the way the board policy manual is written. And I would hope that everybody would follow that same um, that that same example. Now that said, I do believe that it is important for board members to serve on more than one committee during their tenure in office. It's important to get a sense of what each committee is responsible for. And so there should be a rotation of individuals around committees periodically, not all the time, but periodically, so that they get a sense of serving on more than just one committee and more than in their quote, area of expertise. Different perspectives, even if they're not expert perspectives, are important and the underlying part of our system of government. So with that said, I'm certainly ready to move forward with voting for this. Public comment. Nobody online. There's nobody online. I see no one online. Yes. President Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Lang? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. And a uh, point of order, that would be Vice President Smalley, I guess, going forward. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Item D, RAF TELUS Financial Consultants Agreement. Would staff like to present this? Sure. Um, Heather, were you taking this or am I taking this? Story? I can take this. Good, good evening, board. Um, well, staff has calculated the estimated impact of the initiative on the district revenue. Staff has requested for a scope of work from RAF TELUS to independently verify these figures. They have provided um, a scope of work for a not to exceed of 4,285. While this amount is within the interim general manager's approval, district council has informed staff that the item should be brought to the board as an information item in the interest, interest of transparency. That concludes my report. Thank you. So yes, just to sum it up, we wanted to get an independent, it's very important to have an independent analysis of this, mm -hmm. staff centered estimate, but as we know, Ralph Tellus has the rate model, very easy for him to run new numbers that show the actual effect of the mm -hmm. fixed charge limitation ordinance, now otherwise known as measure U. Mm -hmm. um, so staff, uh, the advice of council is bringing it, making it as transparent as possible. Thank you. Thank you, President. Okay, consent agenda. Um, point of order, uh, is this not subject to comment by the board and public? My philosophy is we should always have comments if there are, are comments to be had. 
I, um, I believe the Brown Act legally requires yes. anything that is on the agenda to be subject to comment by the board and the public. Is that not true? Yes, yes. that's true. Okay. Yeah. So, so if I may, just briefly, um, I, I believe that uh, Ms. Lowen's comments uh, early, earlier need to be uh, incorporated into the statement of work, which is a description of how much money was left on the table by the board voluntarily deciding to reduce the um, volumetric rates uh, in the last rate uh, increase. Um, that is the focus just on the fixed charge uh, is not, does, would not present a, a true uh, financial picture of what occurred during the most recent uh, rate increase proposal, which in the interest of transparency, I, I opposed. Um, so I, uh, I hope that that will be done um, in order to make sure that the district is fulfilling its obligation as a provider of information on this, even though uh, politically, we, we understand that there is a, a, a vested interest on the part of the district uh, to not have Measure U um, uh, be, uh, be passed. Uh, in addition, I had a question about this. Is this a um, extension to the existing agreement or is this a brand new um, agreement? This is a brand new agreement. Okay. Uh, in light of that, I do appreciate the fact that in the interest of transparency, this was brought forward in order to make sure that um, uh, everybody had an opportunity to comment on it. It is a very, uh, very much a hot button issue uh, with not only economic, but political ramifications. And so um, thank you for, uh, for bringing it uh, to, the, to the board as an agenda item. Any comments from the public on this item? Okay, no comments from the no, public. I'd like to call line. Cynthia. That, yes, Cynthia, you have a comment? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a lot of questions about the cost uh, and what Raftelis could, what information they could provide about the cost of initiating a new rate increase uh, to compensate for the loss of revenue from the um, loss of income from the fixed rate decreasing if the initiative passes. Um, there are a lot of- Point of order, uh, Jeff, I don't believe that is germane to the issue on the table. That is- uh... Also, the chair's position that this issue is, uh, that's an extension beyond what we were discussing. So, thank you for your comments. Let's move on. So, thank you. We will move on to the consent, consent agenda. You have a comment? I so it says that a board member or a member of the community object on the consent calendar. So I would like to object. I, um, I, uh, Jeff, I'm planning on pulling 11 A and B anyway. So um, you're pulling both of them? Yes. Okay. I, oh, he pulled both of them. I like, yeah, I like to pull. Yeah, he said 11A then. I'm sorry. He pulled 11A then. Sorry. He's pulling 11A and B. Okay. Right. Okay, 11A. Any other comments? Um, my 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 question here had to do with um, the cost here. So this is being ex my understanding is this is being extended for one year. But only ten thousand dollars. It's not clear to me what we're actually doing. We're extending it for a year and adding ten thousand, or we're um, only extending it a year, and there will be other money that'll need to be um, allocated. Uh, sorry, not not clear to me what we're doing. Um, we are just extending the term of the contract. There is no budget amendment at this time. Okay, so 
it, it says up here, at least I thought it said that we had exhausted the 100K, but we haven't then. There's still this 10,432 left. Correct. And that will be sufficient for the next year? At this time, we're making sure that we didn't have an expiration of a contract, which would require drafting a new contract or doing an amended and restated contract. And so the first step was just to extend the contract and make sure that we keep it alive. Um, we'll revisit the budget at a later date. Okay. So just to make clear my expectation, given that this total amount is over 30K, any kind of extension to this, even if it's less than 30K, would require board uh, visibility and approval. That's what we're requesting tonight. Okay, so, but you're only requesting an extension, no money. So my, my point has to do that if in the future you decide you need to spend an additional 20K, that needs to come back to the board, even though it's less than 30K, because the total contract is over 100K, is over 30K. Staff is well aware of the purchasing policies. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. I will make a, uh, I will make a motion. We can go to public comment after. I will make a motion that we direct the interim general manager to execute an amendment to the professional services agreement with CBEC Inc. Eco Engineering uh, for one additional year, ending August 25th, 2025. I'll second that. Uh, board comment? Um, I have no other comments. No. I, I think there was a typo in there because they, they said something about the term year extending and then they had the, the years as 2025. Oh, because it's extending out. Because okay, I get it now. Um, never mind. Um, I don't know. I guess I have I don't know if this is outside the scope, but I guess I have a little bit of issue extending another year and the fact that like it's getting using old data when we could have gauges in the stream right now getting new data to kind of help make these decisions. It's so outside that's, of it's outside of the scope. So yes. 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 Public comments. Seeing none. Go ahead. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Smalley? Yes. Director Lane? Yes. And Director Fultz? Yes. Motion Thank you. Passes. Motion passes. Next item is approval of board meeting minutes, August 1st, 2024. Um, yeah, uh, if I can go ahead since I pulled it, I had two, one question and one comment. Uh, the question is, uh, did not Garrett comment in the oral communications at the 8-1 meeting? I thought that he did, but I didn't see his name listed. Yes, he did. And I thought I put his name. So if mm -hmm. I didn't, I will fix that. Okay. Okay, and the second one is more substantive. So there's a statement in here, President Hill directed interim general manager to create a working group meeting to discuss Brack and Brave Forest Spring consolidation product project. Um, uh, what actually was said at 2256 is, I believe the board voted to have a working session. And so I would like staff to set it up and report back. Um, the the intent of the original request that the interim general manager has consistently ignored now for several months is that this session be a session of the entire board and community, not a subset, not a small group, not excluding anybody that for whatever reason, you know, people believe need to be excluded. Entire board and the community, which would include Brack and Bray, their representatives, Forest Spring, their representatives anybody from the community that wanted to attend. I'm concerned that this language starts to modify what was actually said to allow for some flexibility on what the board actually asked for. I'd like to see that change to reflect the actual words used by President Hill. You may need to go back and review the uh, uh, video to do that. 
I'll be happy to assist Jennifer with that. Okay, and then I would note that it was just showed to me that Garrett was mentioned in public comment under the general manager's contract. Oh, okay. I um, not not during oral communications, but during the uh, closed during session. Not during open, but during closed session. No, no. it was, no. It was, it was the open session. Open. Yeah. I thought he did it during open during oral communications. Uh, no. It's under item 10B. Yeah. yeah 10B. On page 60. 10B? Yes. He's All right. right. I, uh, my error. Sorry. Okay. Well, I had a question. I wasn't sure. But, um, I thought it was yeah. an oral communication. I thought I put him in there, but I was like, okay. yeah, I could have missed it. All right. Yeah. But, okay, yeah, great. I'll look at the other, the other comment. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay. So, um, I mean, given that we can, uh, I mean, we can either bring this back, Jeff, if you want the time to make the change, or we could vote on it now to pass this with the fact that that edit will be made. With corrections. Let's pass it now with the uh, condition that the change will be made. With okay. Correction. So I'd like to move that, that the Board of Directors approve the minutes of August 1st, uh, 2024, uh, with corrections as noted during this discussion. I'll second that. Okay. Do we have any comments from the public on this? Um, that was the exact section of the minutes that I wanted to um, state that I felt needed a correction. I did appreciate the line being added, mm -hmm. but the difference between group and session was critical. Mm -hmm. And then um, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask this, but um, I did put in a written reminder to the board through an email. And so I think it would come up on a written communication. I turned it in on Friday. So I'm not sure if that can be reflected that um, I also put it in a writing requesting that the working session as a reminder since it was not agendized. Mm -hmm. I didn't get okay. that one. Okay. Is that appropriate? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you mind forwarding me that email? Yes. I didn't get it. Okay. I'll find it in some you. Yes. Okay. District reports, we have none. Point of order. Yeah, we yes. need to vote. We have to vote now. Yes. Oh, we have there to vote. no additional public comments. I don't think you voted on the other one. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. So, um, President Hill? Yes. Vice President Smalley? Yes. Director Lang? Um, I feel like since I wasn't actually uh, a director, I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Okay. And Director Fultz. And then Director Fultz. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just clarification. There's talking in the galleries. And typically, if you weren't on the board, it, it's for a call to abstain. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. So we have no district reports. Uh, there were committee meeting minutes that uh, I don't think we have to do anything with. Nope. Um, there was uh, one letter of concern that was uh, added in, which I don't happen to have in front of me. We don't need to discuss it. I'm sorry? We don't, we don't need to discuss that. Um, no informational material. Um, we are adjourned. Thank you. Uh, at point of order, we're at adjourning point. back to closed session. Yeah, we're, uh, we're going back to closed session. <laughs> can we, yeah, can we make it clear that we're not adjourning? We're returning no. back to closed session. Okay. Continue. No. Yes, we are not adjourning. We're going back to closed session. Everybody mute. Okay, we're good to go. Okay. So we have returned from closed session and report out from closed session is that we took no reportable action. And thank you very much. Anything else uh, we can to be discussed here? Uh, nope. We're uh, now we have one public comment, please. Um, I'm not sure if this is. Um, right now. Po point of order. Yeah, I think we I think we've done public we went comments through the then. oral uh, okay. communications before. 
This is simply the report of yes. our closed session. Yes. And my next step is to say we're adjourned. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, CTV. Thank you.